Indian physical features. The vast spatial of the landmass of Indian subcontinent is characterized by diversified physical features. India is found with marked geomorphological features like mountains, plains, plateaus, coastal lands and others. Broadly, we can divide the Indian physical features into the Himalayan mountains on the north, the northern plains, the Indian desert, the peninsular plateau, the coastal plains and the island groups of India. The vast spatial extent of Indian landmass can be broadly categorized into four major geomorphological components, namely the Himalayas and their associated mountain chains, second, the indo gangetic plain, third, the peninsular plateau, and fourth, the coastal plains. The major divisions exhibit striking contrast in structure altitude, drainage, climate, soil and flora and fauna. Now moving on to understand India is a land of diversity in all manners. Let us say from culture, the economy, the landscape of India all on one landmass. The wide range of physical features of India make a country a country with complete geographical study the complete geographical study gives us the facts that india has every possible landscape that the earth has from the cold mountains to arid deserts vast plains hot and humid plateaus and wide sea shores and tropical islands the physical features of India cover every terrain. Origin of Indian Landscape Millions of years ago, Plateau, the Peninsular Plateau region, the oldest landmass, which was a part of the Gondwana land which covered India, Australia, South Africa and South America over hundreds of years of shifting landmass and ocean currents broke this landmass into multiple pieces. You can see here the tectonic plates where we have on the left the northern American plate then we have the Caucasus plate, Caribbean plate, Nazca plate, on the left we have the Juan de Fuca plate in the Pacific plate the Easter Plate, the Juan Fernandez Plate, moving to South American Plate, Scotia Plate in the Down South America, the Antarctica Plate, the Arabian Plate, the African Plate, Indian Plate, Australian Plate, Pacific Plate on the East, Filipino Plate, just on the back side of Pacific Plate East, and on the top north we have Eurasian Plate. So one such piece, the Indo-Australian state started shifting northwards where it collided with the westward region and then it moved towards the present day Europe. Consequently, this collision caused the landmass to fold and become what we know as the Himalayas today. Therefore, many such geological events led to the formation of each of the varied physical features. The Himalayas are the youngest folded mountains in the world. The first physical feature of India. Now, the next, you can see on the screen here, on the northern side, the Himalayas. Let us now discuss about the Himalayan region. Himalayas. Completely snow covered over 8000 meters above the sea level. Let us know more details. Himalayas, the formation of the Gargantuan Himalayan started around 220 million years ago. There are various scientific reasons behind the creation of this massive topography. 
let us now go through the interesting facts behind the formation of the Himalayas and its future. The general facts about Himalayas. Himalayas stretch for 2,900 kilometers between India, Pakistan, China and Nepal. It is the world's tallest mountain range. In addition to Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain by peak elevation standing at 8,848 meters tall. The range also features several other mountain peaks over 8,000 meters. It is the only mountain range to boost mountains over 8,000 meters. The runner-up in the mountain range is in South America whose tallest peak is just 6,962 meters tall. Science also explains the formation of Himalayas according to the theory proposed by Alfred Wegener, a German meteorologist, coined the theory of continental drift, which explains the first ideas about the Pangaea, the tectonic plates, and the thought that con continents were moving away or closer to each other. This theory illustrates the origin of Himalayas about 225 million years ago. India was a large island situated off the Australian coast and a vast ocean called the Tethys Sea separated India from the Asian continent. When Pangaea broke apart about 200 million years ago, India began to move northward. About 80 million years ago, India was located roughly 6,400 kilometers south of the Asian continent. Moving northward at the rate of about 9 meters a century, means in a century of time for 100 years, it moves 9 meters. When India rammed into Asia, about 40 to 50 million years ago, its northward direction advanced slowed by about half. The collision along with the decrease in the rate of the plate movement is interpreted by the mark of the beginning of the rapid uplift of the Himalayas. This is the 30th sea where the actual location is there and it collided and moved towards the northward. So, all of the 30th ocean floor was not completely subducted. Most of the thick sediments of the Indian margin of the ocean were worn out and accredited onto the Eurasian continent in what is known as an accretionary wedge. These scrapped off sediments from the Himalayan mountain range. The rate of northward drift of the Indian continental plate slowed to around 4 to 6 centimeters per year. This slowdown is interpreted to mark the beginning of the collision between the Eurasian and the Indian continental plates. The closing of the former Tethys Ocean and the initiation of the Himalayan uplift formed for the creation of Himalayas on the northern side of India and they extend nearly 2,900 kilometers covering from Pakistan to Nepal-Bhutan border. Researchers also say that mountains will continue to grow to at some time eroding too. Some side it will be eroding, some side it will be growing. But since the Indian tectonic plate does not look like it is going to slow down any time soon, the net is expected to grow. That means more earthquakes and over time slightly taller mountains to climb. The Himalayas are still rising by more than 1 cm per year as India continues to move northwards into Asia. However, the forces of weathering and erosion are lowering the Himalayas at about the same rate. The Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau trend east and west extended for 
2,900 kilometers. The maximum elevation of 8,848 meters. The northernmost landscape of the country highlights the foundation, the fold mountains of Himalayas. Though geologically young, the Himalayan mountains are the loftiest and the most rugged of the world since they stretch across 2500 kilometers from Kashmir in the north through Arunachal Pradesh in the northeast. These mountains form an arc. This helps keep the cold arctic winds from reaching the tropical landmass. One of the most significant of all the physical features of India is the Himalayas vary in width between 400 kilometers to 150 kilometers means it's very wide in the north as it moves towards the east its width reduces to 150 kilometers the entire mountain belt is divided into three main sections the first is the Himadri out of all the Himalayan ranges this is the highest loftiest and most continuous range found with an average elevation of 6100 meters. This range has the world's highest and the most prominent peaks which exceed 8000 meters height such as Mount Everest 8848 meters, Kanchanjunga 8598 meters, Makalu 8481 meters, Dhaulagiri 8177 meters, Manaslu 8156 meters, Chow Yu 8153 meters, Nanga Parbat 8126 meters, Annapurna 8078 meters, Nanda Devi 7817 meters, and Namcha Burwa 7756 meters. All these are from sources of NCRT textbook of geography of India. The Himalayadri range is formidable and snowbound throughout the year. It is found with number of glaciers and Galicians is a most detrimental process. The metamorphic rocks accounting for the jagged topography. It is found with number of glaciers and Galatians in the most denominational process for accounting the jagged topography. This range is mainly composed of crystalline and metamorphic rocks such as granites, suchists and genesis. Moving on to the second one, the second type of Himalayan range that is the Himachal which is also known as Lesser Himalayas. The range south of Himadri is known as Himachal. It forms the most intricate and rugged mountain system with a varying width of 60 to 80 kilometers and an altitude of 1000 to 4000 and in some places it's 4500 meters. The Pir Panjal range of Kashmir is the longest with 400 kilometers of length and the most important Himalayan range or Himachal range. The average height of this range is about 4000 meters. The famous valley of Kashmir lies between the greater Himalayas and the Pir Panjal range of lesser Himalayas. The rivers like Kishan Ganga, Zeelam and China cut through the Pir Panjal range into Kashmir. The south westward extension of Pir Panjal range is called Dauladar range on which Simla, the world famous hill station is situated. Now the famous Kulu and the Kangra valleys of Himachal Pradesh are also present in this region. These valleys are known for fruit farming 
many of the hill stations like Simla, Ussori, Nainital, Chakarta, Raniket are situated in the same range with an altitude between 1500 to 2000 meters. This range is covered by evergreen oak and coniferous forest. The third Himalayan ranges are the outer Himalayas which are also known as the Shivalik ranges or in short it is also called as Shivaliks. It is the outermost range of the Himalayas and is made up of territory sedimentary sediments brought up by rivers from the main Himalayan ranges. These ranges are narrow and discontinuous. They are well developed only in the western Himalayas. Their average height varies from 900 meters to 1500 meters. The Shivaliks at certain places are separated from the middle Himalayas by the flat bottom valleys known as Dune. The Dehradun, Kotli Dune, Patli Dune are few examples.